Hey everyone, Ripley from Bob's Watches. Today we're talking about the vintage Rolex Submariner reference 5513. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on all our latest watch-related video content. Now, everyone's familiar with the Rolex Submariner collection itself. It was first launched in 1953 and was one of the world's very first dive watches. However, if someone were to say vintage Submariner, likely the model that first comes to mind is the reference 5513, despite it not being at all the very first Submariner reference that Rolex first released. The reference 5513 Submariner was released in 1962 as a non-chronometer rated version of the reference 5512. Virtually identical, with the exception of its dial text, the primary difference between the reference 5513 and the reference 5512 was that the reference 5513 was fitted with a non-chronometer rated movement. The very first examples were fitted with caliber 1530 movements, however this was later switched to the caliber 1520 which continued on until the end of the reference 5513's production. The Rolex Submariner reference 5513 remained in production all the way up until 1989 making it the longest running Submariner reference from the collection's history. Because of its remarkably long production run, a surprising range of variation can be found on Submariner 5513 watches in regards to their dials, crown guard shapes, bezels, hands, and bracelets. Some of the earliest examples of 5513 Submariner watches were fitted with glossy gilt dials which are characterized by their golden colored text. Around 1967, Rolex switched off from using gilt dials to using matte dials with white text, and this continued on until the early 1980s when Rolex switched back to gloss dials. However, these gloss dials featured white text and applied white gold hour markers, similar to the style that are used today in modern Submariner watches. Although the Rolex 5512 Submariner promised better timekeeping accuracy than the reference 5513, the reference 5513 was accompanied by a lower retail price, and so it became more popular amongst the general population. The real-world timekeeping performance between the 5512 and the 5513 wasn't all that significant, and so the lower price point was a huge factor, especially for military personnel whose watches were likely to receive significant wear and tear. The reference 5513 Submariner was one of the most famous and successful dive watches of its era, and it was featured in countless films, uh, most notably the James Bond franchise, where it was fitted with additional gadgets and features to help Agent 007 with his missions. Prices for reference 5513 Submariner watches have increased dramatically in recent years, particularly for the early production models with glossy gilt dials. Because so many saw professional use, many were lost or damaged throughout the years, and those still with their original components charge a premium due to how few are still in existence. The reference 5513 was not the first Submariner ever created, however many collectors consider it to be the quintessential example of Rolex's legendary dive watch. A truly timeless classic that set the standard for future generations, the Rolex 5513 Submariner is a worthy addition to any serious watch collection. Thanks for watching our reference 5513 Submariner video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date on all our latest watch related content.